This is Dr. Rutledge again, and we're going to talk a little bit today about the vagus nerve and Greeland. Um, <clears throat> one of the concerns that's been present uh, throughout the history of bariatric surgery has been the issue of failure of the weight loss surgery. So the old weight loss surgery called the jejunal ileal bypass was abandoned because it had a high failure rate and associated complications. The old stomach stapling type surgery called a vertical banded gastroplasty was abandoned because it had a high failure rate. <clears throat> Some studies have suggested that the present Roux and Y gastric bypass type operation has fairly high failure rates and that raises concerns. And of course there's the new uh, excitement surrounding the lap band and again uh, more recent studies have suggested that they also face a very high failure rate as time goes on. One of the questions that arises then why are these weight loss surgeries having such high failure rates and uh, recent research on the hunger hormone called ghrelin and the vagus nerve uh, with research on the vagus nerve going back some 10, 20, and 30 years uh, can help us uh, understand this a little bit better. It also can help understand why we at the uh, Centers for Laparoscopic Obesity Surgery choose to cut the vagus nerve at the time of our surgery when we do the mini gastric bypass. So let's go back over some of the things we've talked about in the other videos and uh, particularly want to talk a bit, a bit about a foundational principle and that is why people are heavy. Uh, if you think about it, the common sense explanation of obesity being lack of willpower, that obesity is simply calories in and calories out <clears throat> and therefore the solution is simply to eat less and exercise more, although it has a simple common sense appeal, hasn't been very effective in treating the obesity epidemic in the United States and around the world. So a better explanation might be one that chose a different mechanism to explain obesity. What if instead of obesity being based upon the failure of a patient to have enough willpower or gumption to get up and, and uh, eat less and exercise more, what if instead there was a hunger hormone that controlled how much a person ate and that we posit that there's a difference in patients who are heavy compared to those who are thin. That is, that patients who are heavy are out of balance in this hormone. That is, patients who are eating based on this hunger hormone can either be in balance, that is, they eat exactly the right number of calories for them, or conversely, the hunger hormone signal is out of balance. And if that's the case then, uh, obesity could be explained not by lack of willpower or lack of character, but because the hunger hormone signal was out of balance. <clears throat> and in fact, what we find is that ghrelin indeed causes hunger in both animals and people. And uh, when you get hungry, ghrelin goes up. And when you um, lose your hunger, ghrelin goes down. Um, and interestingly, uh, this ghrelin hormonal connection may have something to do with the failure of previous kinds of weight loss surgery and the success, in particular, of the mini gastric bypass. Now that we've known a little bit about ghrelin, we can look back at research that was done 10 and 20 years ago on the vagus nerve. It turns out that ghrelin is created and released from the stomach, and the vagus nerve is the primary uh, efferent and afferent nerve to the stomach. What that means is that potentially disrupting the vagus nerve might affect the stomach. And in fact, numerous research studies now show that cutting the vagus nerve decreases ghrelin. That is, cutting the vagus nerve decreases hunger. And in animal studies, the vagus nerve being cut shows that it leads to decreased ghrelin, decreased hunger, and weight loss. In fact, cutting the vagus nerve is something that has been done in research studies many years ago, and it demonstrated that, in fact, animals that had a vagotomy, that's the scientific term for cutting the vagus nerve, lost weight. And, in fact, when surgeons in the distant past did not have access to acid-reducing pills like 
Prilosec and Nexium and things like that, we used to actually do surgery for ulcers rather than treat them with pills. We used to cut the vagus nerve and cutting the vagus nerve in those patients back in the decades when surgery was the treatment for ulcers resulted in weight loss and decreased hunger or what we called it at the time anorexia. So now we have a link between our experiences from ulcer disease in the years in the 50s through the 70s when we did surgery for ulcers and the decreased hunger that we saw in those post-op patients. We also know now that the decreased ghrelin causes decreased hunger and contributes to weight loss. So during the mini gastric bypass for years, because of the older studies and now because of recent studies showing the impact on ghrelin, we have always cut the vagus nerve. Interestingly, in the patients who undergo the lap band, the vagus nerve is not cut and measured ghrelin levels often go up after the lap band and we believe there's a good explanation then for a lot of failures of the lap band in that patients who have the lap band are restricted but they're still hungry and ultimately they're going to learn unfortunately that there is a way to satisfy that drive from the ghrelin for hunger and that will lead to eating and weight regain. The situation with the Roux and Y is a little different. Uh, many surgeons go out of their way to avoid cutting the vagus nerve when they do a Roux and Y. In those cases, uh, we predict that the ghrelin levels obviously would not decline as much, and those patients might have a higher risk, might be the patients who are regaining their weight after the Roux and Y. There are some surgeons, though, who are cutting the vagus nerve, and sadly, that's associated with a significant problem as well, although a different problem. Animal studies show that if you do a Roux and Y on patients, if you do a Roux and Y in animals, that the gut will be affected by being cut. And if you do a Roux and Y and do a vagotomy, that is cut the vagus nerve, the incidence of nausea, vomiting, and an abnormal function of the gut after Roux and Y surgery goes way up and maybe to as high as 30 to 60 percent depending on how long you follow those patients. So in the case of the Roux and Y you're in kind of a difficult uh, situation. If you cut the vagus nerve you're probably going to get better weight loss but you face a very high risk of nausea and vomiting and bowel dysfunction. Conversely if you don't cut it you face a higher risk of ulcer disease in the stomach and a higher risk of weight regain because ghrelin levels will not decline nearly as much. In any event, that's some of the new research. That's why we like to cut the vagus nerve for the mini gastric bypass. And the mini gastric bypass, because it uses the loop Billroth 2 type connection, does not cause the gut to have abnormal emptying, abnormal function. The pacemaker of the gut still intact, so the vagotomy, cutting the vagus nerve, works very well to help protect the lining of the stomach and to decrease ghrelin. So that's a lot of a kind of information all at once, but essentially we can summarize by saying the mini gastric bypass cuts the vagus nerve, which contributes to weight loss, contributes to protecting the lining of the stomach from getting ulcers, and it helps decrease ghrelin and helps maintain our long-term weight loss and durability of the surgery over time. The lap band does not cut the vagus nerve, it leads to patients with elevated ghrelin and elevated hunger and frequently we predict they are going to fail over time by regaining their weight under the force of the rising ghrelin level. The Roux and Y is a little more complicated. Uh, in many surgeons cases they report they go out of their way to save and spare the vagus nerve and we predict in those cases that those patients will not decrease their ghrelin uh, to levels comparable to those that do have their vagus nerve cut um, and face a significant risk of weight regain. Conversely, there are some surgeons who are cutting the vagus nerve in the case of a Roux and Y and scientific studies as well as reports in the medical literature suggest that those patients are going to have a fairly high incidence of what's called the post Roux syndrome of nausea, vomiting, and uh, difficulty with the function, the gut function after surgery. Well, thanks for listening and hope to see you again soon. Take care.